from the VTEC screens, you have to remove three bolts. You can see them there. One, two, three. And undo this connector here, this connector here, and then the one <clears throat> that goes up the side of that wire, that black wire there for the VTEC unit up. You'll see a connector. It's very hard to disconnect. The three bolts are in like this. Short one, short one, long one. So upper right is a long bolt. Pull those out and then remove the unit. Grab the oil filter, push on it, and you'll hear the rubber seal for the VTEC screen. And then pull the unit out. There's a rubber seal there. Try not to tear it because I don't have a replacement. There we go. Oh, there's a wire hanging up there. It is disconnected. It's just stuck on something. There is the oil sending unit. And the connector had a rubber boot with some electrical tape on it, and it turned hard as a rock. So trying to chisel away at that to find the actual connector took a long time. But there is the connector unplugged, and I'm about to take it out. Hand up there. So that is the tip. Right there is the tip of the pressure sensor for the oil pressure. Now I've got to unscrew that, screw in a new one. Okay, I've got my 24 millimeter open end wrench on the oil pressure sender by going through where the front wheel was before we removed it. So that's where we're at. So here's what the VTEC unit looks like. There's two sensors here. And then there's a plunger here that redirects oil. And this screen, make sure it's clean. Um, I've cleaned this before, so mine's okay. But if your VTEC ever malfunctions, it could be that screen is clogged with oil sludge. And it just has this rubber gasket. It's the only thing. There's no sealant or anything. It's just three bolts. And that, that rubber holds it on. Keeps it from leaking. So I got this one at AutoZone. It's a Duralast PS100. Pressure switch 100. So this is what it looks like. We'll put some Teflon tape on here. This is where the connector goes. Just pushes on. Hold oil pressure switch. Here's the new oil pressure switch. Slightly larger. The important thing is if the threads match, that's the important thing. The connector should go on there just fine. Well, this Duralast is not going to work. After I threaded it in, found out that the OEM tip is a tiny bit fatter than the Duralast. So when you go to push the connector on, you try and push it on here, and it just wobbles around, falls off. It doesn't, doesn't even fit. Put it on this one, a tight fit, and it actually snaps in that little narrow spot. It just goes click and it stays there until you forcefully pull it off. This is not a good replacement. I'm going to wait till the dealer opens. I ended up returning the part to AutoZone because this is too skinny on the AutoZone part. So when I put the connector on it, it doesn't even snap on there. It just falls right off. So I went to Acura. They said they had the part. I got there and they didn't have the part, so they sent me over to Honda down the street. And of course, it's the same part Honda Acura uh, 37240-PT0014. This is uh, 
Tech as opposed to the old one, which is Denso, but they're identical. So I'm going to put that in. I'll just put a little Teflon tape on here, thread it in, and see if the connector fits on. The thing I like about the genuine part as opposed to an AutoZone or O'Reilly's part is that the tip here, it's not threaded all the way to the end like the Duralast part was. So this fits in the hole and then just starts threading. It's so much easier to put in. I struggled getting that Duralast one to go in to catch the first thread. What a pain. Anyway, this is a whole lot, whole lot better design. And you can see right on here, it says Tech, T-E-C. This one had a D on it, the Denso D. Check the connector and it snaps on there very tight, which is good. Now I'm going to take my 24 millimeter box and tighten that thing up. I've got Teflon tape on the threads. Now the threads on this oil sensor are 1 8 by 28 threads per inch and it is ISO tapered same as British Standard Taper and what that means it's it's kind of like a, on a water heater when you screw things in the threads are tapered which means you only got to turn it like three full turns and it's in this does not have to bottom out all the way in because these threads get tighter as you go in so about three full turns is about all you're going to get and then it's you know that European standard good and tight we'll just say that Put the oil filter housing back on and we tighten one two three bolts using a 12 millimeter socket so that controls the VTEC and the oil filter so that is bolted back on okay so the problem started out is that this oil light came on at idle when I was sitting at the red light last night, or Saturday night. So now, yes, I need gas. And no, I don't have my seatbelt on. And yes, the brake is on because I'm parked. So yeah, I'm in park. So we are at idle and the oil light has not come on. So I think the problem is solved. I think it was a bad oil pressure sensor. I found nothing in the pan for the oil pickup line. The screen was clean. Uh, there's no sludge. So now the oil pan has a fresh uh, gasket made from a tube and we have no oil light. Let's see if the idle slows down. Because your oil pressure is going to be lowest at the slowest to idle and it gets up higher on the freeway when you rev it, oil pressure would go up. So we have 613,642 miles. And I hope that solved the problem because I really don't want to change the oil pump. That's where the oil filter was bolted up to that piece we took off. That whole big aluminum piece behind it is the oil pump. And of course the pan, the oil pan is partly attached to that as well. So it's a big job to take that out. You gotta take off the timing belt, the main pulley. Um, it's, it's a big job. This is original oil pump um, since 2000. It's never been taken off. So I think it's pretty reliable. Oil pressure sensors have a little spring in them, and when your pressure is low, then it makes contact and 
completes the circuit to ground. So it just has 12 volts coming in the top and the, the, the connector. And if that um, oil pressure doesn't push against that spring enough, then it uh, goes down and makes contact with the ground and turns on the light. But it doesn't look like it's going to do it, so I think we are safe. I am so glad.